friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Got a project that I'm going to squeeze in. I'm going to bump the priority and move this one up. Uh, I guess that's my prerogative. I feel like this one is deserving if any of them ever were. Here's the story. You got a young girl, a teenage girl, who thinks enough of her mandolin that she actually has her school pictures taken with it. Now for a teenage girl to kind of, if you will, buck all the trends and be carrying around a mandolin, that's important to me. Her parents were, I wouldn't say they were devastated, but they were a little upset that I wasn't going to be able to get this done before Christmas. Here it is. It's a silver tone mandolin. If the young girl thinks enough to carry this mandolin with her pretty much everywhere she goes, have her school picture made with it, far be it from me to not get it fixed by Christmas. So here we go. Friends, I interrupt this video to ask you a question. Does anyone know this young man and father in this photo? Actually, that's a trick question because young Gavin Crenshaw sent me that picture. He said his father is one of my biggest fans. So I'm giving a shout out to uh, his stepdad and his stepdad's name is Robert Nash. You're raising a fine young man there. And uh, Gavin, thank you for the note. And uh, I wanna wish both of you a Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching my videos. You can see it's in actually incredibly good shape. Probably is the best shape of any of these I've ever seen. It's, it's you know, it's immaculate really. But the neck is pulling off of it. And you can see through there, I think, fairly clearly. There you go, you can see through the neck. And because the neck is, and I'm exaggerating, but because the neck is pulling up like this, that makes the string height really high. So it's not easy to play. It's got a pretty good ski ramp. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but there's a pretty good ski ramp here. Um, not huge, but right in this area here especially, uh, the neck is real low, this is real high, this is real high, comparatively. So we got a number of things to fix. So basically we're repairing the neck. We're going to do a real good setup so this young girl can have her mandolin back in probably the best playing condition it's ever been in, I hope. Here we go, wish me luck. Because I'm gonna be turning this thing every way but loose, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take the pick guard off. It's got little rubber washers to hold it up. What I generally do with things like this is I put all the parts in a bag, something like that. Just keep them out of the way while I'm working on the instrument. <laughs> Keeps them all in one place. Sometimes I put the parts in the cases as well. It would be possible to fix this, I believe, without removing the fingerboard, but it would take me longer. Um, the problem with removing the fingerboard is we're going to damage this area here and it's going to look worse before it looks better. I hate damaging this. I really do. I would like to leave it pristine. You know, because I'm bumping this thing up in the priority and because my time is really, really precious to me, I need to just do whatever it takes to do this the fastest way possible. I've already tried monkeying with it. It is not loose, so it's not gonna be easy to get it apart. One really quick way to do this would be to cut, pull this fret and just cut straight across and pull this off. And that would be legitimate. But then you're gonna see the crack across here and you'll see the crack across there. So, you know, I, I, that doesn't bother me too much. I'm, I could do that, but I don't think in this particular case, or at least I hope it isn't, going to be much harder to just heat it up and just take it off in one piece. Once again, I've got my super duper heating tool that I made. I've turned it on and you can see it's starting to warm up. It's up to 62 degrees. This is Fahrenheit, 64 degrees and it goes really fast. Within just about five minutes, this is gonna be up to working temperature and we should be seeing the glue starting to soften. I didn't really say it, but you know, these necks on this type of instrument can be put on many different ways. 
I've inspected this as much as I can inspect it with what I have there to look at, and it appears to be a dovetail in this case. So in, a, in the case of a dovetail, that's why I want to take this off where I can get down to the dovetail joint and maybe put heat in there or steam in there or whatever it takes to, to loosen it up and get it apart. Sometimes when they're dowel pins, see, you would pull it off that direction. It would just go straight off that way. But because it's dovetail, it's going to have to be lifted up this direction. Let me point out, I have a couple of other real concerns about this. These dots that are in this fretboard are plastic. So heating this up could be a problem. I could, I could melt that plastic. I don't want to, obviously, uh, but uh, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. And this, for me, appears to be what I have to do. And what I'm going to do is just kind of keep this moving as much as I possibly can so that I don't keep it in one place too long and melt the plastic. You know, it's a little early, but uh, I was expecting a little more than what I just got on my first attempt. It's, uh, you know, I wanted it to feel like it was just going to come loose, you know, and it didn't feel that way, I have to tell you. Yeah, I'm not sure what glue they used on this, but it sure isn't an easy unglue. You know, I, I've i taken many fretboards off that I've glued with tight bond and I don't have this much trouble at all. Yeah, they're a little harder than hide glue sometimes, but sometimes hide glue is not that easy to get loose with heat. It's kind of crazy how that works sometimes. burning myself just touching things not significantly but it's pretty darn hot it's very uncomfortable to touch anything I am a pole yeah I can feel it coming loose now finally whoa well we knocked her loose oh you can see up here where it started off it didn't do too well well that's just part of it. We'll have to fix that too. So it knocked out a pretty good chunk of wood up in this area here under the fretboard. Not a big deal. We'll fix it or, you know, put it back together where you won't notice that. But just kind of wish that wouldn't have happened either. These are little chunks of wood that are coming out from underneath here. This is a, a extra little tag that's on here. And of course, you know that the chip that came out had to span the piece that I need to pop off it. It couldn't have, you know, like this couldn't have been down here where it wouldn't have hurt anything. It had to be right where I have to take this apart, you know. Uh, it just isn't easy being me. That's all I can tell you. Now I've got to figure out a way to get this piece of wood off of here so I can put it back in the fretboard. I'm going to heat it super, super hot. Wayfaring stranger. Got it off in one piece. That's good. So we can glue that back to there and there'll be no problem. Okay, so that's the reason I had to get that off is because this comes off also. There's the rest of the chips and that piece. Now you can see the big neck joint there. So it is definitely a dovetail. It's going to be tricky still though. We've still got our work cut out for us. Once again, we'll utilize the baggie to put all the little parts in. At least now you can see that we have access to the full joint, and that's what we needed. I don't think it's going to be easy, even at this point. I really think it seems to be glued really well up at the top, really from about half or a third of the way up on both sides it seems to be very very tight. I have a pot of water on my little hot plate on the floor and it's heating up. 
It's just an old teapot and I'll be putting this nipple on there pretty soon in hopes that the steam will rise up this tube and come out this little nozzle. This little nozzle is just a basketball or football uh, inflator is all it amounts to. And I've also ground the end off of it so that the hole shoots straight forward as well. I could easily insert this in the hole here behind the neck as you can see. But I don't think that's going to get the water where I really want it, at least not very quickly. Now that I have access to this, I'm going to go ahead and drill some holes. So right in these corners, right here and right here is where I would like to get water down in there. So I've got a two millimeter uh, drill, which is, this is about 78 thousandths, so a two millimeter should be really close. And I'm just going to drill down in the corner, right straight down through, trying to just trying to approximate where I think the dovetail is going to go. Whether I hit it exactly or not, I, I doubt it, but I'll get close. I've been through this world of Hopefully the hole I drilled is big enough. If not, at least it'll get down in there. It's it's just barely big enough. The fact that I have a the hole on the end of that should work and get it down in there. Well, you can see I have a little tea kettle there with steam and a tube. And if you follow that over, it's putting hot water and steam into this joint. Uh, not working the best. I really probably need a little tighter pressure deal. Uh, there's too much, too much pressure escaping, I think, right now. But it's working. You can see it does move the stuff through and, you know, maybe it's all I really need. I'm trying to wiggle the neck to see if it'll come loose. It definitely has not been loose. There is no sadness, no toil, no danger in that bright land. Well, I gotta be honest, this isn't loosening up at all. I finally just picked up the, the teapot and actually poured hot liquid down the tube. That has flooded the inside of this, so I know the water's getting in there. You would think that as much water as I have down in that joint, and as far down as I can get the knife down along each side that something would give. But no, it doesn't want to. I mean, it doesn't want to give at all. It's not loosening up anywhere at all. To which I go, I'm going there. Well, I gotta be honest, this isn't doing anything. I have not got a bit of movement out of this. And this, I'd say it's the first neck ever where I couldn't get any movement out of it, wouldn't you know? No good deed goes unpunished. So, I'm going to just take my razor saw and slice it right along the joint. I figure any damage I create, I can fix. This sucker's coming out of here. I've gone too far into it now. It's not going to win, you know, no matter what. It's not going to win. So I'm going to cut down through that joint to the point where it's at least not connected on this front face. And it appears to be connected on the front face. To see my mother. She said she'd meet me. I'm just going over Jordan. I'm just going. Wow. Yeah, no good deed goes unpunished. You know, I put a lot of leather under both sides and under here, and it's, you know, it's off of the mandolin. It's not touching the mandolin anywhere except where the leather is. So. It's rigged up to sort of work, but the truth is I haven't got any movement out of this, so I don't see how this will help me much, but I'm going to just 
tap on this and see if I can get some movement because nothing else is working. Got the plastic hammer here. You know, I keep trying things until something works. So I've got the hot plate off screen here that you can't see and I'm heating up this little thin bladed knife and I'm going to poke it down in the joint. Something's got to give eventually. You can hear it steaming. I don't think that's going to work either, the way it's feeling. Well, I don't give up easy. So I have a torch here and I'm heating this knife up. Somehow or another, this puppy is coming out of there. These little flim flimsy knives, that's what always happens with them. They always bend, so you end up with a big kink in it. That happens every time with the flimsy ones. This one here is a little, this one's stiff, but it's uh, too wide to really get in there well. I'm seeing movement though, which is completely amazing compared to what I had before. I'm afraid I'm going to bust the whole neck block out because I'm really putting the pressure on it at this point. I'm going to lighten it up and take it apart and see what it looks like again. Drastic situations call for drastic measures. I'm going to use my stiffer knife even though it's a little bit wide. I'm going to force it down in there. Something's going to give. I am tired of monkeying with it. it loose I don't know what broke but it came loose so if anything broke I don't know actually not too bad considering my gosh considering all that effort that isn't too bad of a result holy mackerel well it's lunchtime I need a break clean all the finish off in that area that'll help the neck stick better um, not that it had any trouble sticking mind you but it just you know that's why I think that heel probably separated and pulled up because it wasn't glued down that's part of it anyway I don't think the joint was fitted up all that well and we're gonna try to fit it up much better there seems to be a hump in the middle and it's low here so we're going to try to make it one plane also. I'm going there to see. That actually looks pretty darn good. I'd be happy with that if I could keep it right there. In fact, you know, there's no reason to go crazy with stuff like this. It, that looks pretty good. If the neck angle would happen to be right, I think we'd be better off gluing it in place right there and then putting some additional wedges back here to tighten up the joint real good and if we have to we'll drive some glued wedges down in here um, to tighten it up. I think we might be there because that's really pretty darn good. There's a lot of different ways to do these things and on something like this that I don't know the neck angles and things and there's no real good way to know it's just trial and error so I'm going to leave it sitting here and I'm going to try to put the uh, fretboard on here and the bridge on here and try to get an eyeball angle trying to use my best effort here to eyeball this I don't think we're far off but it's really hard to tell the darn bridge just keeps moving you know I think that's pretty pretty flat right there it's it actually comes up right at it 
and this is all almost all the way down so I say let's go for it let's let's not belabor it and beat it to death let's go for it right where it's at I think that no matter what the problem whether it turns out being high or low I think there's enough work working space in this bridge that I can make it work that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it well after cleaning that off and getting it to seat in there properly I'm just going to go ahead and glue it back in place because everything looks good to me and yeah there's some wood tear out but I don't think it's consequential to making this work well my mother she said she'd meet me when I come there's very little way to clamp something like this so I'm holding it in with my hand and I'm going to get glue on these and I'm going to drive these wedges in here tight I don't want to drive one in before I get the other one in. I think you can see there's a pretty tight squeeze out all the way around there and it looks real tight. I'm also of the opinion, I know a lot of people don't agree with me on this, but I like to wedge this also. It can't pull up if you wedge this. To me, it's just a common sense thing. I think that'll work fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue down in here. And I'm going to tap this into the hole lightly. You can break something if you with a wedge like this, if you drive it very hard, you'd break the you'd break your joint. I think that's got it. The neck angle looks good to me. I'm not worried about these things sticking out because we can cut them off at any time. I'm going to see if my little rubber band deal will go around this and maybe that'll help tighten that up. I'm just going over Jordan. Well, I was able to get a number of wraps around there, and I think that that's also going to help. <laughs> I can see a little bit of squeeze out again. So, I think that's as good as this baby gets. And uh, I seriously don't think it'll be a problem anymore. I really don't. I think it's uh, good and solid. I think it's lined up just right. Looks real good to me. So, we'll just have to give it 24 hours to relax. Uh, of course, while the neck is drying on that mandolin, I'm going to glue this damaged spot back. I'm just going over home. I believe that'll work. Let that set overnight as well. It's been 24 hours. It looks like it's uh, all set up. Actually, when I say 24 hours, it's just been overnight, but it's approaching 24 hours. Um, I think everything's good and solid. Uh, it looks, looks real good, so we're ready to saw these off flush. These little razor saws are pretty invaluable for things like this. This one is such a weird thing. I think I'm just going to get the Dremel tool and grind it down to match the contour because it's just a weird shape. Got a little shop of coffee, tea, and soda pop written on the faded window. This glued up really nice. Looking down the fretboard, it actually looks really flat. So I don't think we're going to have to do anything to it. I thought we would probably have to f straighten it out somehow. But I believe it's going to work out pretty well. Yeah, it, it had a big under arch in it, but that was because this had, you know, somehow these two things had kind of bowed right there in the middle. But now it's, it's really flat, which I'm happy that that's the case. 
I'm going to get the uh, bridge now and kind of do a mock-up fit up before I glue this on here to see if I'm going to have to do any adjusting. Based on that, it almost looks like I knew what I was doing because it's just right at the top edge of that. And this can go up a lot, so I think we're in real good shape because this is pretty much all the way down. So I think we're in pretty good shape. The only thing I need to do now is look at this fretboard extension that goes on this and see what I can do to maybe fix that or improve that a little bit because I don't think it was in too good a shape. Okay, I see it's not going to go all the way up because of the piece I put in there. So I'm going to have to notch a little bit out of it. Because that's a fairly square little notch, if you can see the pencil marks there, I think I'll just go cut that out on the bandsaw and uh, that'll save me some time. I've notched out the little piece. I'm going to try to hold it in place, see if I can get it to slide in back into its place. Yeah, that looks good. The reason I'm going to glue it to this first, and the reason I'm going to do that is because this actually had, they had put some wedges under here to fill up the space and I don't know if that must have been somebody repairing it later on or something. I'll, I'll deal with those later I, but I do think I am going to glue it onto here first because there's some little bit of a tear out and, I, and it kind of registers back in that tear out spot and if it creates a problem I'm sure I can deal with it. Best friends, there you'll find the three of them Monday, Wednesday, Friday I believe that fixes that up real well where it should go back together just like factory. We'll give that a couple hours to set up or maybe just an hour to set up and then we'll glue the whole thing back to the neck. Everything's set up, the glue's dried, so I'm about ready to go ahead and put this back on here. I'm just checking it to make sure that it looks like it's going to line up okay and that everything's going to clamp down right. It really looks pretty darn good. I don't see a real problem. I'm just looking down the fretboard. Everything looks flat, straight, square. It kind of locks itself into place. So, you know, I'm about ready to give it a shot. The uh, only thing I think I might do is just flatten this out just a little bit, clean it up a little bit with a straight edge razor blade. And I don't know if that's for sure a good thing or not I because it kind of registers where it is but I'm afraid that this old glue and stuff it won't stick very well and I don't want to have any problems so I'm just going to go ahead and level it all off you can set a watch by their routine. Yeah, I think that's actually even better yeah it looks really good I don't see a problem anywhere so I say let's get her glued down. Classic small town Norman Rockwell scene. It's amazing how easily that stuff slides. And I don't like the salt trick. It just contaminates the glue and I'm not into that. They talk about the wears and wins, a little gossip now and then. Well, I've come to a startling realization and I don't like it at all. And that is I'm going to have to unclamp all this, take this fretboard back off. And the reason is is that I didn't know it, but once you clamp it down, there's a it puts that ski ramp back in here and I think it is because this wedge and this wedge I'm pretty sure came from the factory. It's like the fretboard extension is really what it amounts to. Anyway, it's just too thick and it pushes it pushes the uh, bridge up and and I guess that's what was wrong with it originally but anyway I'm going to take it apart and uh, do it again because I don't like it I, it's just it's not going to be good this way the fretboard is going up at such a steep angle it'll never play right so I got to fix that or it just won't play right no good deed goes unpunished that's for sure it definitely messed it up it was flat before but it's not flat now so my guess is this is too tall right in through here. And that's just a guess, really, because I don't know why it's doing that. Unless the neck itself has a big whoop in it. 
The neck itself looks fairly flat, although there is maybe a little bit right in here. Bottom line is I gotta wash all the glue off and we'll start again. So I've got it all cleaned up. It's still wet from the water, but it's at least there's no glue on there. And when I just lay it on there flat by itself, it's pretty good. But when you start clamping it all down, things go to heck. And I can, I can see that now. <laughs> I didn't really notice that before. But I think the first problem is I think this is too thick on this side. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on that. About who's doing what, maybe why. You mean to tell me you don't know about what's her name and so and so? Can you believe that old coot's still alive? Well, I'm going to have to actually let this dry because I cannot carve it. It's just not working very well. Nothing's ever simple. Well, I, I feel fairly confident about how flat and straight this is now. But now, because there was some tear out there, this is lifting up. This tear out is lifting it up. So I've got to get rid of that. And I think that might solve the problem. It'll probably take a little more tweaking even after that. I think that's as good as I can do. I know I am going to pin it this time. I'm going to put a nail here and a nail here uh, and mark it because it was impossible to keep it from moving the last time. After changing that angle here I thought I better do another test and sure enough that lowered it enough where this is barely, I can barely get it in place. It lifts it up. It lifts it up a little bit when I get it in place and I've got it all the way down but that should still work, and if I have to, I could cut a little off the feet, so I think we'll be fine. But we should be able to at least set it up now. It That got rid of that huge ski ramp. There, I mean, seriously, it was really bad. Once you clamped it all down, and I think it was riding on this and pushing this tail up, that was part of it. Part of it was that this also came up right back in here. Um, it just didn't, it just wasn't made very well. But I think it's about as good as a guy could do it right now. I don't think it could be much better. I've shown this technique several times before, and most every time I show it, somebody says, I just use salt. Well, I know I, I can use salt too, but I don't like the salt thing. It, it contaminates the glue. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do repairs that are going to last forever. And I don't want anything in there contaminating anything. It's very simple to do this. You, and it's, it, it looks like a lot of big deal, but it's not. It's really nothing to it. You just drive in your little tiny finished brads, little tiny ones. Try to drive them in straight up and down if you can. And you don't have to drive them in very deep. Just, you know, just in there where they're solid. Then you just take a pair of these side cutters and just, you know, lay, the, lay it basically flat and just pinch it off and it just leaves a little nub. And that little nub is really all you need. You position your neck where you want it and then you just press down basically. You can tap it with a little rubber mallet or something like this. And That will put a good indention where you need to drill your little hole. Now you could take a little tiny drill bit and just drill that just the least little bit right there. Or in this case, the nub is so slow, I'm not gonna even worry about it. I'm just gonna press it together. And I think it'll be fine. It won't slide now, that's for sure. When you're doing something like this, you want complete coverage, as I always say, but the thinnest complete coverage you can get is really the better. But I'm glad I caught that before I let that set up. That would have been a bummer. I really thought it was fine, but once I started looking at it close, I could see the ski ramp was had returned. There we 
we go. Now the end of that's white, and it really, it's such a small a thing. You'd see it if you didn't darken it, but it's just easier to darken it this way than it would be any other way. And I'll just darken this outer edge. You probably can't really see it even, but the little wedge goes right in here, and it seems to fit pretty darn well. So now I'm just gonna try to get it back out of there, if I can, and get some glue on it. It ain't coming back out this time. That looks pretty good. I think I'll just let that be good enough because if it, I, you can fight something like that and end up just making a big mess. This one is smaller and it was made smaller too. I wouldn't call it perfect, but it's so close that nobody will ever notice it. I'm gonna look and see if I need to clamp it down. And from my eye, maybe just a little bit on this side mostly. The other side looks pretty flat. So we'll let that set overnight. I'm pretty positive we'll be able to string this baby up tomorrow and uh, see what she sounds like. It's the next day, we've got the Mandolin up in real good shape. You can see the neck looks good on it there. You can see a little roughness around the edges Where you know you're gonna have damage whenever you take something like that off and there's a little bit of damage, but not much One of the things uh, is the glue, you know, it's still a little bit messy I've got a warm rag here and if you go back over that a lot of times you can wash off a lot of the problems and So I'm just doing that first and then that'll leave me with a clean instrument and then I'll know where what problems I still have but any place you've put glue on and washed it off during the process it will always leave a little bit of a film and sometimes most of that glue even hard glue can be washed off this tight bond is definitely water soluble, the original that is, so you can wash it off if you get it on there, if you just use a little bit of elbow grease. So I think we're, now we'll dry it. Really think we're just about done with this. It's just the little niceties, the little touch up things that make the difference at this point. Um, I, I want to clean up this feel here because you can feel where we took it apart there. Uh, same way on this side. I think if I use a, a very fine file, these are really fine tooth files and it won't cut much but I think it's enough to knock off the little jagged feel without really creating a, 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 a damage problem. So I'm just going to kind of like lightly go across the seam there and just get rid of the little seam that's that I can feel. It's a, almost like the fretboard itself has shrunk to the neck. The neck feels wider than the fretboard does to me on both sides. But I'm going for feel at the moment more than looks. It's you know sunbursty, but in the darker areas, it's I think it's fairly red. I've got a a, a dye that kind of splits the difference. I've got a dye that's called light brown, and it's on the brown range. But everybody says it has a lot of red in it, so I'm going to go ahead and use that light brown dye in here, and I think that's going to be enough to at least knock off the you know the white area that your eye draws to. Phoebe's leather dye, it's the light brown. Picking out a brush with a real small set of bristles. Doesn't look quite dark enough though, to be honest. Up there, I got it a little bit on the binding. You can just scrape it off very <laughs> lightly and get it off the binding. It's not a perfect match. I wish it was a little darker. I might mix a little dark brown and a little red with it. I think I'll pour this in a cup and do some mixing. 
because it's not dark enough. So I'm just going to put the light brown in this little container and I'll add a little bit of dark brown in the container and a drop or so of actual red in the container. And I think that's going to get me pretty close. Well, I've got the dark brown dye here. And I'm going to put a few drops of that in to darken it up a little bit. Now I'm going to take some of this red and I'm going to put a couple drops of this red in. I don't think this red is as powerful as it used to be. So I'm going to put three drops of that in. The old red dye was very powerful and one drop would have been plenty I'm sure. The newer dye, I think they've changed the formula or something. It's not nearly as potent as it used to be. This is looking like a good color to me. You know, I'll never be able to match it exactly. Even if I had good color vision, it's almost impossible to match finishes. But I think this is going to get me in the ballpark. Oh yeah, that looks much better to me, to my eye. It still wipes off a little bit more than I wish it did if it would just stay on there. You can see the line down through here and I think you'll see it more or less disappear as I go across the line. Now that looks really nice now. You really can barely tell it at all. Anywhere you get the dye on the plastic, you can just lightly scrape it right off. Wow, I don't think you can beat that. What do you think? Looks pretty darn good to me. See if we see any other places. There's a few little places that I don't think I created these problems, but we might as well touch them up since we've got the dye out and it matches pretty well. Let's see if we can just touch up these other little specks and spots. I think that looks good enough that I doubt she'll even realize the neck came off of that unless she watches the video. So that leaves me to the next step which will be to level these frets real good and recrown them. We'll do a good fret job on it then we should be ready to set this thing up. My hope is that it won't take much to level these frets. You know, looking down it now, it is definitely not a ski ramp anymore. It used to have a huge thing like this. I mean, it was huge. I don't, you couldn't have really played it very well. This, now, this actually falls off a little bit. From about here back, it actually, and I'm pointing down because it falls down, which is fine. I don't think that's an issue. These are pretty much decoration frets when you get out this far anyway. I think we're good there. I think we're good. I think I see enough filing going on there now that I think we can call that good enough. And I think we can recrown it now. And it ought to play like a million dollars. Well, that's going to probably be about it. It's about as good as I can do with this. This is, it's just, you know, this is a guitar fret file. And like I said, I filed the edges off of it and that lets me get pretty close, but it can't get all the way down. So the last thing I can really do for this to help it out is to take 600, wet or dry. This stuff has a sticky backing on it. I'm trying to peel the little plastic off. Helps me hold on to it better. And I'm just going to recrown them basically with the sandpaper. This will knock off any roughness or any squareness. And it also makes them really, really slick. You have to keep it moving and so that you do an even job all over. You don't want to. 
You don't want to sand more in one spot than another. But that really does make it look nice. This, this makes them look round again, even though they weren't all that round. I think you can, speaks for itself, hopefully the thing will focus, but I think it speaks for itself how nice they look. Now the negative is that it messes up the fretboard and we've seen this before, so you know you just have to go back through the fretboard now and clean up the fretboard. But the fretboard in this case needed cleaning up anyway, so that's not an issue. Most of the time on most fretboards they need cleaning up anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Here's another one that's high, except that the frets are so tiny here, I'll have to get a smaller file. Yes, this is boiled linseed oil. You wipe it on, and essentially you just wipe it right back off. And there, my friends, is a completed rosewood fretboard on this. And I'm going on record and saying it's never been that good before. Sorry if that sounds conceited, but it's just a fact in my opinion. Now we're going to put the pick guard back on it and the nut back on it. And I think we're ready to string this baby up. Whenever you tighten things like this down on an instrument, you just go to snug and you stop. You, if you go any further, you're going to strip it. After all the leveling and everything, I don't know if this nut's going to work or not. I want to try to set it in place and see what I think. But if it looks good, this saves an hour or two of work. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, why you got it off? Put a, you know, a bone nut or whatever on there. Actually, I think this is bone, believe it or not. Um, but the point is, uh, the nut is one of the hardest things there is to do. It's not a simple, you can't just go saw it out real quick and put it on. It, 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 it's a lot of work to get it set up. So if this nut fits and it's going to work, it's way less work, way less time, saves the customer all kinds of money. So I say reuse the nut whenever you can unless it's just a piece of junk. And this is not a piece of junk, it's fine. I don't see a problem with it. Coffee, tea, and soda pop, somewhere in that city. As far as I can tell right now, it looks okay. That, if anything, it looks low. And I don't like to shim them. I know a lot of people would just put a shim under there, but I don't do that. Ordinarily, on mandolins like this, I typically recommend a lighter string. I've looked inside this one with my mirrors, Every, and the thickness of this top and the bracing is pretty strong. I'm going to go with standard mandolin strings on it. The standard gauge is uh, 11s to 40s, and that's what I'm putting on here. But I decided I'm going to go ahead and put on the silken steel, because I think that'll give it the best sound of all. One last little detail. Right in front of this, I don't know what caused it, but there's some wear right there in the front. It looks like maybe they had a much wider nut on this at one time and someone put a bone nut on here. That's what it looks like. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead, since I've got that die mixed up, I'm going to just go ahead and touch up that spot too. Why not? I think you would agree that that looks much better. Well, it just never ends. I started putting the strings on this and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the strings consistently working. And here you can see right now what the problem is maybe, or maybe you can see that. See how it pops up and down like that? That shouldn't do that. That should stay down. This should. So I think it's just simply that these center screws are loose, I think. Like, man, they're not only loose, they're about to fall out. So. Hopefully I can tighten those up without creating any problems. I don't know, sometimes tightening them up all the way will create problems too, but I don't want them to fall out. 
I run into other problems, I'll show you what's going on. I can tell you for sure the uh, the D strings, the slots were cut too deep on this nut. The other ones are close to being too deep, but the D's are too deep. So uh, they whoever cut the nut slot didn't cut it real consistent. The D's are definitely cut deeper than the other ones. So there's a little bit of buzz coming off of the D. There's a couple ways to deal with it. You could fill these D slots with super glue and, and baking powder and, and, and baking soda, and, and that works, but it doesn't work long term in my opinion. It rubs out, and I don't think it's a very good solution personally. The other option is to make a new nut, which takes about an hour and a half. So there's your, you know, 120 bucks or so. The other option, which nobody here is going to like this, is to just file this first fret down just a little bit, just to actually get in here and level these frets down a little bit more. It doesn't take much. A thousandth of an inch is all it takes. A thousandth of an inch is not very measurable. For my money, for this mandolin, that's what I would do because it just doesn't make sense to spend that extra money to fix it. You know, this fix here to me is temporary. If you just fill it, uh, you could shim the whole thing, but then they're all going to be raised up. They're actually pretty good except for the D. The D's just low. So, you know, you know, some people would say this is a stupid idea, but I tell you what, whatever works is not stupid if you ask me. And it saves tons of time and tons of money. So that's what I'm going with. I'll just go ahead and lower all the frets right here at this front edge a little bit. That ought to be enough to get us by. And uh, yeah, I'll have to do a little bit of touch up work now. And it's a lot faster than the other alternative. I think we can get by with just these first two because I was putting a lot of pressure on the first two frets. I don't think it's gonna buzz. In other words, this ain't my first rodeo. I've done this kind of thing many times in my life to save the customer a lot of money and a lot of time. I don't hear any buzzing on the D's now. And so I think we got away with it. I don't know if the bridge moved down here or not, so we may have to re-intonate it a little bit. But let me tune it up and then we'll show you what it sounds like this time. I th think we're done this time. Well, I believe I've done all the damage to this thing that I can do. You know, you can see it looks like a brand new mandolin almost. It's just in very good shape. Silver tone, it says, if I'm reading the number right, it says N1 inside. But it's a nice little mandolin. I don't think there's a thing wrong with it now. It plays like a dream. This is a medium thickness pick, and look, it'll hold the, it'll hold the pick way back here, you know. So that's really low action. I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's never had action that low before. And no buzzing. So you go all the way up and no no buzzing all the way. And with that with that low of action, that that is really a thin little pick. <laughs> so you can't hardly beat that. Well, let's show you what it sounds like. Well, that just about does it for this little mandolin, except for the playing, and we're gonna play it for you here in just a moment. But first, I want to tell the young lady that owns this mandolin that I have a Christmas present for her. In addition to fixing up her mandolin, send you a download of my mandolin training for free. 
So there you go. That's a $45 value and I'll throw that in for free and because I want to encourage any young lady that wants to learn to play mandolin, I want to encourage her all I can. And the fact that she was brave enough, wise enough, smart enough, whatever you want to call it, to have her school picture made with her mandolin was a huge influence on me getting this thing uh, pushed to the front of the line. And Merry Christmas, sweetheart. Hope you enjoy your mandolin. Now let's play it for you and see what it sounds like. real easy but since this is a Christmas present let's see There you go, young lady. Merry Christmas to you. Hope you enjoyed watching your mandolin get fixed up for you. It's in just absolutely perfect shape, and I would guarantee you that it's never been set up this well in its history. Blah, blah.